and certain um, do certain things in our life to prove our worth. And part of that is simply is is studying hard and and, and learning the reality around you and going down that long hard road that most don't don't take because it's really difficult. It's really hard. You get rewarded by doing that by by reading things like this and being like, I understand what that's saying. I think. And other people saying, I have no clue. And that's, that's the difference. And, and then those people that are understanding it are the same ones that are reaching higher states of consciousness. It's all connected. It's all, it's all connected in this. And so essentially what the, what the author Asa says is, and, and what a lot of other, other cuneiform writings say from Mesopotamia, is that somewhere around 200,000 years ago, roughly, and in the, in the human genome, if you, if you look at the sequencing and the age and what they think maybe how, how far back it was. That's some, also some agreement that's been made there too in this, in this time frame. It doesn't mean it's exactly that, but it's, it means a lot longer ago than we've been told. Oh, yeah. You know, the whole human story is, is given to us in, in something like 10 to 20,000 years, when as yeah. really it's several hundred thousand years, quite a bit longer. And that's a long time. Think about what you could do, a civil, civilizations could do in 10,000 years and think about what civilizations could do in 200,000 years comparison. There's so much of human history that's been left out and suppressed and kept away from us that we don't know about. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to bring up is that these beings on the right and Lil and Enki, these who's also, who was originally called Ia, they, they're not simply metaphors for things like the sun and the moon and the planets and uh, the different, um, these are not just the, uh, the archetypes of human nature. That's something that the experts tell everyone, in, everyone and a lot of people, even people who are very smart will say, okay, that's fine. They're all just made up. Then how could every culture all across the world echo the same exact information, knowledge, and the certain traits that these, that these beings have had? I'm not saying that these beings have physically been involved in every single culture and like telling them what to do and handed them. But I think they were all based in, on, on ancient, ancient influences that have been able to carry through because, and we're going to talk about what I, what I, what that means um, as we go on. But so they, these beings came here again, like I said, the Yajiji were, didn't want to work anymore. They needed some kind of a physical being to work in the third dimension, to labor here in this planet because they they were very interested in two things. One, they were very interested in, in the, harnessing the energy of our planet because I think some planets, depending on their, their specific electromagnetic energy and, and the capability of what they have, some have far more energy than others. And if you're an energy being or if you're just trying to harness energy, that'd be one of the things that you'd be really interested in is some kind of a crystal energy grid, which is what they say existed here long, long ago by, by other civilizations that had come here you know way before they arrived okay and we're going to talk about that as we go on but so here you have the situation where you have these 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 hominid beings and they've been called it looks like a combination of neanderthal and denisovians these are and these are absolutely the early hominids that were here but they're not simply just an evolved ape there was an, there was other steps and stages involved that that also had a, had a hand in in them reaching the next stage that they were because a Neanderthal and a Denisovian is is much more advanced than than a than an ape or a gorilla. I think part of it we've been made to believe that maybe they're they were just like apes, but they really weren't. Actually, Neanderthals could um, could they were much stronger and and had other attributes that we don't have that we have we actually have lost since then. So these these. These, these Anunna beings, these Anunnaki that are here, they trying to figure out what to do. How do they make a being? How do they make a worker that they can do this work? So they, because they're advanced hominids themselves, they needed a, the ability to, to have some similarity so that they could use their genetics to jumpstart one of these beings, okay? So they took these Neanderthals and Denisovians, and like I said, well, this, this question mark right here, that's where that comes from. That's why you have a doubling of brain size out of nowhere and why you have these really strange incursions into the human genome. So they essentially, they essentially jumpstarted the, the human genome. And today, and if people don't believe that, I'll tell you, to, I'll ask you to look at one piece of evidence only. 
Ignore all this if you want to. Go study our genes. Go study our genome and go read about what scientists call junk DNA, but what's really called non-coding DNA. You can manipulate the past information all you want, but, but DNA holds secrets that can't be um, ignored or suppressed in terms of hiding it. It's there. And if they look, they're going to find it. And so you look at, you look at this aspect of what is non-coding DNA? What is that, man? Well, if, if we are a Darwinian ape that evolved naturally on this planet, what non-coding DNA is, is it basically provides the missing link that separates this entire thing. It proves that we're not an evolved ape because what it means is non-coding simply means it doesn't share DNA with any other species on the planet. That's simply what it means. So if you think about, oh, well, we share a certain percentage with cows and monkeys and fish and look, see, we're just like them because we share this percentage. How it really works with DNA is you have a base that's developed that takes up the majority of what the DNA is. It's like, it's the base of that, of that design. But what really separates um, these huge leaps and these gaps in, in the DNA of one species to another in terms of one being more advanced than the other is, are these small things. And that's why when you look at the percentage of non-coding DNA, it may not be huge, but it still doesn't, doesn't represent any other species on the planet. And it is the reason why if you take the combination of the fact that our brain is so much longer, longer, larger, and we have this DNA, it shows you the fact that we became separated from the animal kingdom a long time ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, um, to be more, to be more specific. So, and I think, I think it's yeah. very interesting that you brought up that they are actually advanced hominids. They are basically advanced human beings and that's a big misunderstanding as well a lot of people think that these are aliens you know green beings with antennas and stuff but they're just actually advanced beings from different uh dimensions well okay well let's think about it for a minute if if we knowing what we know about the universe and knowing what we know about biological beings there can only be a couple variations you either have a hominid being which is the mammal side that, I mean, the, the, whatever branches of that, that, that diverge, right? And they're much taller than us, though. I got to point that out. They're not like we are. They're, wherever they come from is so much larger that they're able to be large. They're able to be taller because we're designed specifically for the gravity and the, the, the specifics of our planet, how, how the electro, electromagnetic grid here works. Now, but so what does that mean? Well, it means that beings could really, in my mind, only come in three groups, you either have some kind of a hominid being, you have some kind of a reptile being, or you, which is a dinosaur essentially, it, but, but beyond that, or you have some kind of an insect being. There's, there's really only three groups that could really reach higher states from, from under our current understanding. They could reach higher states. And I don't think that there's, in, there's it's, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying that there's all these insectoids and reptilians and all these things everywhere all over the place. I think that some of these beings reach such high states of advancement that they no longer look, look like what we would perceive as being like a reptilian being. In many ways, they may look a lot like a hominid or something because I think they, these states of energy and higher consciousness in a biological being eventually take on a more advanced form. So, I, so we shouldn't be surprised that, that the Anunnaki are, are advanced humanoids considering the fact that you, they, they're the ones who, who need, needed to use their genetics to jumpstart us. So if, we, if they weren't humanoids, then how would they be compatible to do that? There's the, the proof behind that, and not to mention all the different ways that they're shown, which is shown as this tall, horned helmet being, in most cases, you know, that's usually a lot taller than, than, the, than those around them. So I want to bring up this really important point. Who created the Neanderthals and Denisovians then? Where did, all, where did all of this come from and what's the whole point of the story? It really comes down to, if you, if you delve into the ancient cultures all over the world, um, some, of the, some of the ancient Asian, Southeast Asian cultures and some of the Mayans and the Hopi, they talk about how you know, beings long ago had created their ancestors before, but some of them actually don't mention anything about the Anunnaki. Some, some of them specifically mention the Pleiadian star system, okay? 
which I believe is the same as the Anunnaki. I believe the Anunnaki are just, they're just beings that are part of different places that are part. The only reason they're called that is that's the group of them that there were, that that Royal family group is known of that probably has, is, is grouped up with probably people, you know, they're probably from Sirius and Orion and the Pleiades and they're Pleiades and they're all together in this, this group in our solar system. And that's what they've called themselves. Okay. Okay. That's what I think the difference is between them. And so I think, I think we had a situation where something like the ancient um, Pleiadian civilization came here long before 200,000 years ago and had a specific plan for how these Neanderthals and Denisovians would eventually end up through something like macroevolution, okay, versus micro, looking at the differences between how a species can change on a, on a, on a, on a, lo- a small level versus how it can change on a major level, okay? And I think they, they probably the idea is they probably come back after certain time periods and just slowly tweak and change things over time rather than just this huge jump start like we saw. So I think in many ways, these beings, these Anunnaki beings who came here, they disrupted both the energy grids that were here on the planet and disrupted the genetic genome of these Neanderthal Denisovians. And that's what led to us. So you could think of us as being, we're really not supposed to be in this place yet. It's, we're, we're too early. You know, we're way before we were supposed to ever reach this point. And, and that's why there's so much chaos because we're like these we're like these children who are incarnating into these incredible bodies with higher consciousness. And yet we're not really ready for it in many ways. And, and so we, that's one of the reasons why it's so easy to trick our demiurges and keep us in such a lower state of energy. So I want to talk about Chris, do you have any questions on that before we move on? No, no, I just I find that was very fascinating. And just that I had, um, there must have been some kind of split along the way in the um, our disagreement in how we were supposed to go um, among the uh, leaders or the hierarchy of the Anunnaki because yes. of the, the suppression along the way. But I'm sure you're going to get to that. Actually, I, I guess I should bring that up. Let me, let me, let me bring that up. That's a really good point. One of the things I talk about a lot is the whole idea that in this Royal Council of 12, they call them, okay? They've had the many names for them. They call it the Elohim. They've been called the Council of 12, the Anunnaki. Um, there's, there's a lot of different names that they've been called. And they, they became greatly, div- this, and this is one of the, the reasons why, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. It's one of the reasons why we see so much conflict we see today is that Enlil, remember the work of Enlil, when I mentioned in the, in the Adrahasis, the work of Enlil, he was in charge of the physical labor on the earth, on the planet, okay? So you have this group of royal beings and they have certain names and their names are not like the names we have. The names that they have are names that have been given based on their title. So Enlil and Ki is simply just a way of saying they're lords of something. So En meant lord. So Lil, lord of the sky, lord of the upper dimensions and governing the physical dimension. And then Ki would essentially, and, it's, and Ki's name is essentially lord of the earth and specifically fresh water and, and inner earth, okay? Because they, I think some of them, they basically consider the third dimension part of, part of um, the role of Enlil instead of Enki, which, by the way, if that, had been, if that decision had been different, everything would have been changed in our history. Because what happened was, essentially, there was this great divide that developed between these beings. Because Ia, Enki, was this master geneticist, um, the Australians actually called, they actually said he was um, the great serpent and one of the great creators of the universe. So we don't even know how powerful these beings are. But, but Ia, Enki, the great serpent, dragon, he was this master geneticist. And, and the, one of the amazing things about it is that I found so fascinating, no matter how many times I mention it in, or read about it, is the idea that, that Enlil wanted us to be designed and, and some of the others wanted us to be designed as, designed as simply a primitive worker. But Ia, with the help of, um, of Ninma, ended up designing us as a being that could even reach a higher state of energy than them. Try to wrap your head around that. That's why it sickens me so much to see what goes on in our world. Because we, 
if we're able to go down this, at the end of the show, we're going to talk about human states of energy and 